Hello, Taylor Swift. Hello. How are you? I'm doing great. How are you doing? I'm good, thank you. Welcome to the hot desk. Thank you for having me. Yeah, this is oh, great. Oh, there you go. Look at that. That's what we she can likes. even write a message on it. You can write a message when we're finished. Definitely. If you want, that's why the pens are there. Um, now, you've been writing songs since you were very little. Um, what was the first song that you wrote and what inspired you to write it? Well, I started writing songs when I was 12. Okay. And, that's um, quite an achievement. Thanks. Uh, I started writing songs when the guy who came over to fix my computer had a guitar with him because he had just come from a show. And he asked me if I wanted to learn a few guitar chords, and I said, yeah. So he taught me three guitar chords and um, left his guitar with me that week, and I wrote my first song. Wow, you don't get that from IT support in the UK. That's an incredible service. <laughs> you came over to fix your computer and taught you guitar. Absolutely. Brilliant. Definitely. There's just so many purposes for that <laughs> you know, guy who came to fix my computer. The computer was fixed, and also like, I you know, found what I wanted to do with the rest of my life. Which is a wonderful thing. What, was, what inspired you to write the song, though? What was it about? Was it about a favourite uh, toy or a boy at school? Or, or? The, the first song that I really finished, and I think there's a really old, horrifying demo of it floating around <laughs> on the internet, because naturally there would be. Um, but it's called Lucky You, and it was this song that I wrote about a girl who's different from everybody else, and she's unique, and she like sings her own song, and she like goes her own way, and she knows she's different, and... Very 12. It was very 12. It was very uplifting and inspirational and sugar-coated. And um, I look back on it and I sounded like a little chipmunk singing back then. Oh, it was so sweet. It's a beautiful thing. Yes. Is it kind of one of those things that mum and dad bring out at Christmas? <laughs> um, it's the kind of thing that fans show up with at venues and I'm like, and they have like the little CD that I used to hand out at my little karaoke shows. Like when I would play at little festivals and fairs or like garden club meetings and I'd be like, hi, here's my CD, you know. I'll pay you to listen to it. <laughs> you know, you don't even have to buy it. I'll give it to you. Um, people show up with those CDs now at the, the shows, and they're like, "Well, you signed this. You signed it when you were 12." And I'm like, oh, "In crayon." Don't listen to it. <laughs> um, that's nice. It shows you've worked what you've got, though. This is a nice backstory to have. People watching this now are going to be like, "Good, Taylor got out there and she did her bit." Well, thank you. I guess I I think that it was so much fun for me when I was younger that things that felt like work were like school and studying and doing projects and doing mm. your homework. That felt like work. Yeah. But for me, music was just fun. Mm -hmm. And the fact that I've been able to pursue something as a career choice that's just that much fun, it's really cool. Um, Taylor, we're going to move on to a first of two quick fire rounds. Ah, This wonderful. one's clever, though, because I, I haven't done one of these in a while, so I've had a lot of thinking time. Great. I've come up with a genius idea. I'm going to take... <laughs> Well, don't laugh. You haven't heard the idea yet. I love the way you talk. Are you? <laughs> Come up with oh, a now okay. Now it's about how I talk, is it? First of all, it's the glasses. Then it's my ideas for the TV no, show. No, I didn't say anything about your glasses. What? What about the glasses? Your glasses are great. Shut up. Why are you saying about my glasses? <laughs> <laughs> uh, basically, I've taken uh, titles from your album, and I'm going to give you a question associated with the title of the track. Wonderful. Really? Yes. Thanks, Taylor. <laughs> uh, right, here we go. It's quick fire, remember. Picture to burn. Whose picture would you like to burn and why? <gasps> Ooh. Ooh. I can't really answer that one, honestly. You have to. Um, which picture would I like to burn and why? Yeah, whose picture? Uh, the pictures of me when I had braces. Nice. Yes, um, a place in correct. this world. Where is your favourite place in the world? Um, my favourite place in the world is going to visit my best friend at college in a little town in Kansas called Lawrence. I'd love to go to Kansas. Yes. Is it cool there? It's wonderful. It's nice and it's a college town. It's like everything there revolves around college. Okay. They're really stoked that they have a college in that town. So it's, it's really cool to be there. They have toga parties, I believe they're called. I've never been to a toga party. But I they do exist though, don't they? I believe that they do occur, yeah. I hope all those films in the 80s didn't lie to me, Taylor. <laughs> uh, stay beautiful. What lengths would you go to to stay beautiful? Um, Obviously, youth and genetics are on your side at the moment, but that could all change. Yeah, I would probably start working out. Do you work out now? No. Well, you know, <laughs> I, do, I do play a two-hour show every night. So Lots that's, of jumping around, running up and down. You have to keep your endurance up, so I take the stairs sometimes instead of the elevator. <laughs> should have said no. What have you done that you should have said no to? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> What have I done that it's I should have said one. no to? Um, I think I should have said no to... Um, 
I should have said no to myself when like on award shows. I have really bad vision and this is so random, but on award shows I always wake up in the morning and I'm like, I don't need to wear my contacts. Uh, oh, you're... And then I show up at the award show and I have to present something in the teleprompter and I'm like, up next Would you like to give these little bad boys a go? Definitely. We probably have the same prescription because I can't see anything. I'm right a minus 1.5 in the left eye. We have the same prescription. Yeah, I've just found this out. It's new. This is new for me. They look really good. I can actually see the people across the you room now. You look really good in those. Thank you. Um, do you want me to wear them for the rest of the interview? You won't be able to read I that. I can't read my... You, I, you I mean, I'd like read. you to because you do look good in them. You but should wear I those. I need to be able to read the... That's just yeah. it's functional that okay. way. Okay. Um, fearless, when was the last time you were scared? Uh, the last time I was scared was when I was on the plane. I had a connection from Nashville to Chicago and then Chicago to London. This was yesterday. This was recent. Um, and I was on the plane and Chicago weather was tossing us around in the plane. And like, I get in this place where I'm like, I get all cryptic where I'm like, oh my God, that would have been my last words to so-and-so, and that would have been my last words, and yeah. that, that blog that I just wrote would have been my last words. What was I, I, was, I was talking about? What was I talking about? And so I just like freak out and- Have like, a Valium, Taylor. I probably should, yeah. I should probably calm down on flights more, but like, you know- you those, li those little interconnecting ones are the worst ones though, and just, Chicago is notoriously bad to I got fly into. so scared, and I'm just like in this moment where I'm just like, oh God, oh, no. But yeah, it's all better now, because obviously I didn't die. Yes, which is touch wood. This is, yeah. That's really, that's good news. Or all my research would have been wasted. Yeah, Don't exactly. Um, you would have been so inconvenienced by that. <laughs> oh, I've been Googling <laughs> all night, Taylor. I'm terribly inconvenient. <laughs> um, okay, the best day. What has been the best day of your life so far and why? Wow. The best day of my life was when um, on All in One Day, mm -hmm. I found out that my album had gone back to number one um, for the 11th week and that my single love story was number one on the pop charts in the US and I got to see my first Rolling Stone cover. All in one day. Wow. It was such a good day. What a day. And that was, was a great one day for me. Incredible day. Uh, teardrops on my guitar. Mm -hmm. Nice. Uh, when was Thanks. the last time you cried and why? The last time I cried was um, it was, oh my gosh, there was this commercial for Walmart, and it was this, <laughs> it was, it was um, a mom and a daughter, and this, they're, they're, they're like, someday, you always knew someday she would have to go off to college, and that day, you know, it's like really sentimental, and there's music playing in the background, and the yeah. mom takes her daughter to college, and they get in, the, they get into the dorm room, and it's like, you know, cement floors and like this just completely plain bare room with nothing in it and then they go to Walmart and they get all this stuff and they make it all pretty and then um, it's like but you can help her prepare for it and then she walks off and she's walking out of the dorm thing back to her car to leave her daughter at college and her daughter comes back and is like mom wait and she turns around and they hug and it's so sweet Jesus <laughs> <say that. laughs> I'm just being honest. That was the last time I cried. Oh, I, I understand. <laughs> oh, I have some comprehension of what you mean. <laughs> it was so cute. <gasps> it was a good commercial. That happened two days ago. Let's move on, shall we? Yes, definitely. <sighs> fifteen. <laughs> <laughs> what was the most outrageous thing you did when you were fifteen? Oh, um, when I was fifteen, I. I, um, my best friend and I in, in high school, we used to dress up in prom dresses and just like go out to eat. Just, and we'd run into other kids from our school and they'd be like, why are you wearing a tiara? And we we're like, they did have a good point. Cause it's Wednesday, you know what I'm saying? Like, why not? Yeah. We used to do stuff like that all the time. And it, it, um, it really was fun to not really care too much about what people thought in high school. Yeah. So when I was 15, I did that. Also, I had my first boyfriend when I was 15, and nice. I just thought it was the coolest thing in the world. Was he a nice guy? Yeah, he was really nice. Cool. How was your prom? Did you, have you had a prom? Do I've they still to, happen? I've gone to three proms. You've had three proms? Yeah, I'm an addict. Are they? Do, I've had to stop going now, because I'm, you know, 19, and you sh should stop at some yeah, point. Yeah, where people think you're a teacher. People <laughs> think. 
Um, but Prom I mean, obviously, crasher. I've been spoon fed and I love it. American television for so many years Absolutely. growing up here in the UK. So, does, does the guy hire a limousine and pick you up and put a little flower on your wrist and oh, yeah. all that stuff actually happens? Yeah, I've had a bunch of di different variations. If you want to talk about prom, we'll be here all day. Like the first prom that I went to, I went to with my freshman year boyfriend and he was a senior and it was so awesome. Oh my God. Um, and I was like really excited about um, getting this dress. And so, for months, in advance, I would be looking for the perfect prom dress, and it was a mess of me just like really hyping it up. And then prom came, and I was like, "Oh, it's just like a dance, okay." Yeah. Um, and then the next year, um, I didn't have a boyfriend, and I didn't have a date, and I was at the volleyball. Unbelievable. Thank you. Is this, you think because men are intimidated by you, they didn't want to come up to you and go, "Will you come to the prom with me?" No, I, I just you know didn't get asked. Just plain and simple. I've come to terms with that. I'm cool with it. But two days before the prom, um, I was at the volleyball courts and I watched this guy get break, broken up with by his girlfriend. And, oh, and here we go again. He sat down next to me and he was like, <laughs> he was like, man, she broke up with me. I'm like, I'm so sorry. He's like, will you go to prom with me? <laughs> and I was like, oh, he sounds like a keeper. I was like, yeah, sure. <laughs> and so I just went with a friend the next year and I wore like a $40 dress and just did my own hair and makeup, and that was a really fun prom. The next year I was on tour, my junior year, so I was not in school and I didn't go to prom because I had a show that night. The next year was my senior year, and I also wasn't in school because I was touring, but MTV came to me and they were like, hey, let's do a show about you going to prom with a fan. And they had this nationwide contest as to who was going to go to prom with me. Wow. And it was on television, and it was so much fun. That's, that is incredible. So you, no one was asking you, and then you've got the whole nation applying online to be your date to the how, prom. How much fun is that? It was cool. I don't expect you to answer this question. I'm a gentleman and you are a lady, but also, as I say, being spoon-fed the television and the American dream and stuff over the years as a child, after the prom, is there a make-out point? Is there somewhere you go and drive in a car and you sit alone and make out with your dates and stuff? Uh, not, Does this not, happen? Not for Does me. happy days lie really. to me? Um, some people probably do, but I, I don't know. I never really... I thought not. No. I thought not. I see, there were, there were parties that I usually wasn't really invited to, um, so I didn't go to those. And um, I always kind of had a curfew. Mm -hmm. My parents were really kind of into the whole curfew thing, so well, I never really... I don't know. Probably. That is the end of the first quick fire round, which only <laughs> took 27 minutes, so exactly. we're all right. Uh, Tay, that was superb. Uh, we do have another quick fire round. I love quick fire rounds. This is your favourite things. Okay. Okay, Taylor Swift, this is your quick fire round of favourite things or things you think are brilliant. Okay. Because I believe that's your favourite saying for UK people to use. Brilliant. Brilliant. Lovely. Lovely. Yes. Go blimey Mary Poppins. To say together. Do you say together or t together? Together. Together. But then again, even in the UK, <laughs> even in the UK, I sound stupid, so I wouldn't worry about Together. that. Together. Together. <laughs> if you could just... It's... That's my favourite thing. We're going to do this together, okay. and it's going to be brilliant. <laughs> Are you ready, Pickle? Yes. Okay, your favourite thing, and this has to be quick fire. Okay. Okay? It's my fault, the last one, but it wasn't quick fire. It yeah. was like, you know, it was just us chatting. There was some major contemplation going it, on. It was cool. It like was pom based fun. You, they you, had to be perfect. Yeah, no, you, you're absolutely right. But this has to be quick fire. Okay. Okay, your favourite things breakfast cereal? Ah, uh, honey nut Cheerios. Nice choice. Drink? Um, Diet Coke or water. Sandwich filling? Tomato mozzarella. Oh, controversial. Season of the year? Fall. Song. Hot and Cold by Katy Perry. Oh. Place to wake up. Place to wake up. Um, my London Hotel. Because they have these, the comforters on the beds are really heavy. And so you feel like, you, you feel like, uh, with jet lag it really helps because I can't get out of bed. Nice. Because it's, they're really heavy. Um, it's random. Go, next one. <laughs> okay, sorry. Uh, number. Irrelevant. No, it's not. It's good. 13. Number. Really? Without a doubt. Hands down. Well, we can talk about this. Let's slow the quick fire round Everything down a bit. Everything good in my life has had a 13 involved somewhere. But you know it's notoriously an uh, unlucky no. number. Mm -mm. It's really a good number. Okay. You just People just don't see its full potential. 
I was born on the 13th. I turned 13 on Friday the 13th. My first album went gold in the U.S. in 13 weeks. Um, every time I've won an award at an award show, I've been seated in row M, which is the 13th letter, or like the 13th seat, or the 13th row, or the 13th section. Um, it's all good stuff. I might be wrong here, Taylor. I'm going to lean across the hot desk. All right. Can I, can I smell a little bit of OCD about you? Yeah, definitely. Are you counting the rows and making the letters equate yeah. to numbers? Well, I like to organize things. I like things to be neat and Me organized. Too. And um, what month were you born in? Uh, December. Oh, so they, that doesn't make you a Virgo. I'm a about, Sagittarius. Is that a Sagittarian trait as well? I don't know. I just think it's um. It's just sort of something that happened to me where I just, people are kind of weirded out by it because they're like, well, artists are supposed to be disorganized and like disheveled and messy and yeah. artsy. But for me, like when it comes to like putting things together, like it needs to be organized. Do you have like, do you have to have the jars facing forward in the cupboards and stuff in the fridge? It's not really that bad. It's not like that. It's just more of like structure of, of just general structure. Like, yeah. I've ruined another quick fire round, haven't I? Sorry, it's me. I'm so sorry. Okay, let's move on. Uh, what's your, who's your favourite band? My favourite band is um, U2. Ice cream flavour? Um, cookie dough. Oh, city. Mm -hmm. What's your favourite city? City. Um, would be Nashville. I live in Nashville, so it's inevitably my favourite city. There's a lot city. going on there. Uh, what's your favourite smell? Um... My favorite smell is um, at the body shop, they have these like scented oils and there's one that's cranberry and then there's one that's like blue spruce. And when you combine them and you burn them in the little candle thing, y'all have body shop here, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay, when you put them in their little candle lantern things, it smells like Christmas to me and it makes everything perfect. The smell of Christmas, nice. Yeah. Uh, what's your favorite candy bar? Um, Milky Way. Oh, really? Do y'all have that here? Yeah, yeah, yeah we do, yeah. Uh, what's your favorite word, apart uh, from together? <laughs> together. <laughs> uh, my favorite word is probably um, either perpetually or inevitably. Two words I won't repeat. Yeah. Uh, animal, what's your favorite animal? Animal, um, <laughs> I, uh, I don't know, probably um, anything, cu anything cute, anything that like does that. Like this? Yeah. Squirrels, what actually. About, what, I really like squirrels. Those ones that do that as well. <laughs> that do that, I mean. <laughs> Anything that does this um, okay. is really cute. Well, i just pop up behind things. I look would say definitely a squirrel would be my favorite animal. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Um, what's your favorite piece of clothing, Taylor Swift? Sundresses. Dresses are my favorite thing in the world. Like high-waisted skirts and tops or dresses. I'm not, I don't, pants make me tired for some reason. Yeah, me too, that's why I don't wear any. Yeah. Oh, I sorry, pants and trousers. Yeah. yeah. Um, what's your, who's your favorite designer? Um, my favorite designer is probably, well, my favorite store is Topshop, but my favorite designer is French Connection. They have really cute dresses. Let's make sure we send this to Topshop, because Taylor will never have to buy anything in there again. I'm obsessed with work it. For I'm you. just like, they know, they know it. They're like, they this have to good. kick me out after like, I'm there for five days straight. Um, <laughs> place to go on holiday. My favorite place to go on holiday would probably be um, probably be somewhere where it's really hot and beach ish. Like Hawaii or Bahamas, Barbados, Hawaii, like anywhere they make really great like pina colada type deal. Mm. Something Virgin out of a pina coconut. Colada. Yeah. Um, who's your favorite person? My favorite person is um, my mom. She's a really good person. Beautiful thing. She's a great person. She's a great choice for a good person, favorite person. Yeah. If you can pick your mum, you should always do so. Yeah. Um, now, in a that's the end of that quick fire round. Thank you, Tyler. Oh, Smith. really? Brilliant. Yeah, we're going to slow things back down again. Okay, good. Because we've been moving at such a rapid pace so far. Yeah, it's um, In a nutshell, um, how did you, how do you feel you got from being a normal teenager to a world superstar and kind of work? When were wow. you first aware that the tides were changing? in that direction? I think for me, like my parents raised me to have the mentality that you're not going to get anything unless you work for it. Mm -hmm. um, I think my biggest pet peeve is when people feel like they're entitled to success or um, things like that. So I've just always 
worked really hard, played a lot of shows, tried to get out in front of as many people as possible, written a lot of songs, always have music floating around in my head, bouncing off the sides, you know, just like nonstop thinking about music. Um, I think that possibly helped with getting me noticed and um, my family also has been really wonderful too. We moved across the country to be in Nashville so that I could be closer to music. Right. Um, and I think that, you know, to be honest, like writing my own songs and playing my own instrument, I think really helped get me f to where I wanted to go faster than I would have if I hadn't had much of a story to tell. Um, are you at all worried? I know that, that you know there aren't any kind of well comparisons really, but if we look at somebody like say Britney Spears, and it could be attributed to the sad state that she finds herself in now, uh, that she had a lot very young. Um, is that something that you're wary of? Do you see a kind of life lesson in Miss Spears, and is it something? Uh, what uh, measures are you taking to guard against that kind of thing? Well, I think that you know everything in life is is on a case by case basis, mm -hmm. and you know, I think with me. I've tried to surround myself with people who are going to be really honest with me whether I like it or not. Because um, there are going to be times when I walk out and I'm in a dress that um, gets vetoed by mom, management, everyone around <laughs> me. They're going to be like, that's too short and you're showing too much and no, turn around, change clothes. And basically, I think that it's all about having people around you that aren't afraid to tell you no and aren't afraid to tell you something you don't want to hear. Um, now you're obviously uh, very, very busy with your career. Um, how do you kind of maintain a balance between being Taylor Swift and being a 20-year-old woman wanting to do 20-year-old women things? Well, I just look at life differently now. And I think that you hear a lot of people complaining about being celebrities and they're like, it's so hard because I can't even go shopping anymore without people asking for my autograph all the time and everybody's always staring at me and my life is so hard. Yeah. People complain about that. You hear people complaining about it a lot and I just feel like you have to have a perception change mm -hmm. when your life shifts into the gear of everybody knows who you are. Um, you have to focus on, on thinking about it in the perspective of I'm going to go shopping right now it's not going to take the amount of time that it used to take before people knew who I was. It's going to take double. And I'm cool with that because this is what I wanted mm -hmm. and I'm one of the lucky people who actually got what they wanted in life. And it's, it's a good thing. You know, you, you can't look at it as an inconvenience or else you'll feel inconvenienced nonstop. Like, it's so much fun for me because when I'm driving down the road in Nashville, like, people are being dangerous with like, like driving up next to my car with their camera phone and like trying to drive and trying <laughs> okay, to take yeah. a picture and I'm like, oh my god, this is so. You'd rather awesome. just pull over, do the picture with them so everyone's safe, and then just move on. Oh my gosh, it's amazing. Yeah. It's so much fun for me. Like I just find it all to be entertaining. It's all fun. Like it's not hard at all. My life is busy, but it's not hard. Since you signed your record deal and you know some dollars started to materialize, what's your become your biggest extravagance? I try to take care of my band and my crew and just. Okay. You know, for me, that's the most fun thing in the world. You know, rather than like buying a Lamborghini, um, I just I make sure everyone feels like they're in the right place. You know, I make sure that everybody feels like they're really taken care of and um, paying them well, bonusing them well. Like, you know, just and also like fun things for me. Like, I like being a good tipper at restaurants. Okay. Like, I like giving really good tips and things like that, and just random things that that you you do because you've been given a really, really good lot in life. And I just am really grateful. So I try to um, just kind of help other people when I can. Random acts of kindness. Random acts of kindness are really fun. Like you're going through Starbucks you? and you just like pay for the person behind you. And they're like, why did you do that? And it's like, because it's kind. Do you do that? Yeah. Really? It's, it's fun to do that. Well, I suppose it is, but isn't that, have you tried that anywhere other than your home city? Have you tried that around the world? Yeah. And, it, and people are just, thank you, thank you for the coffee. Yeah, it's nice. And also people, uh, people in McDonald's drive throughs don't expect to get tips. Your attention, please. Sorry. Your attention, please. Right. <laughs> Call, text or reject is our regular feature on the hot desk where you wake up in the morning, okay, and you've got three missed calls from three different people. But the question is, Taylor Swift, who do you call back because you're, you're eager? Who do you text back nonchalantly? And who do you reject? Call, okay. text, or reject? You wake up, you're sandwiched between those two things on your hotel bed, you can't move, and you've got three missed calls. They are oh, Britney right. Spears. Call. 
I, I've got the other two yet. Oh, okay. Britney Spears, Dolly Parton, or Joe Jonas? Oh, God. Um, Britney Spears, text, uh, Dolly Parton, call back, and it would make my day, and uh, Joe Jonas, reject, and it would ruin my day. Um, Taylor, it's been an absolute pleasure meeting you. Thank you. You're a joy, and enjoy the rest of your time in uh, London, and uh, continued success, not that you need me saying that to you. Um, and if you don't mind, would you do us the honour of signing yes, the desk? Yes, definitely. Um, pick whichever spot you want. There you go. What well, does it... Here's the OCD kicking in again, okay, the fact okay. that they're all going that way. Do you want to come and round? This is, come yeah, on. I'm going to have to do this.